Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning, I'm Jeff Kellum, and I'll be your host for today's uh, edition of Encounter. Most people in our community, unless you're new, and there are some new people, uh, know what CHOW is. It's the uh, Community Hunger Outreach Warehouse, that's the acronym. And many people know it through the bags, barrels, boxes, and bins that they'll find in churches or in uh, uh, grocery stores where people will bring in food to donate non-perishable items to help their hungry neighbors. There are other folks who will know the distribution centers very well. Uh, they know where to go to um, sign up to receive food for their hungry families for a short time. So between the barrels that receive the food and the distribution centers where they can pick up the food, uh, there is the warehouse, the actual warehouse. And today we're gonna be talking about some renovations to the warehouse that will tie into a job training program. Now, I come at this as one who knows nothing absolutely nothing except what we kind of talked about when I first met the two of you. Mm -hmm. Our two guests are Katie Blaine and she is the pro uh, work advocate. the what? Work advocate. The work advocate. Thank you. You can, you can speak out loud because every, everybody knows I don't know. The work advocate for the Chow program or for the Broome County Council of Churches? For the Chow program. Okay, yep. for Chow especially. Mm -hmm. Jack Blaine is the project M manager. Jack, Jack Seaman. <laughs> That's right. It's Jack Seaman. We played with these names and I, I mixed them up just to play with them and now I've done it for real. So we're just going to start all over again. Jack Seaman yes. um, works as the um, Chow program manager. Yes. Not the project manager. The, so oh, now that we've gotten off to this really rocky start, it can only go very smoothly from here. Yep. But, you know, it's early in the morning. Uh, yeah. so, it's Friday. Yeah, it's, well, it's not. It's Sunday. Or it could be oh. Saturday. <laughs> Listen, um, let's, let's look at the renovations first of the warehouse. Mm -hmm. be between the reception of the food and the distribution of it, there's this huge warehouse yes. uh, in, in pretty much downtown Binghamton. Right. Yeah. And this warehouse, let's just pack it with school buses. How many school buses could you get in that warehouse? Um, I think you could probably fit, fit uh, 10 full-size school buses in there. So it's a big place. Yeah. And the renovations that are taking place are to make it more efficient. And yes. tell me about the renovations, first of all, for, for the warehouse. Then yeah. we'll talk about job training. Yeah, definitely. So as far as uh, warehouses go, our warehouse really isn't that large compared to, you know, maybe the food bank of the Southern Tiers warehouse or, or mains or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, so we we're able to distribute the food that we do by uh, the high turnover rate. Um, however, uh, with the warehouse that we, we did have, we weren't able to take advantage of uh, opportunities to fill it with food. Um, so prior to the, the renovation, we had six walk-in coolers and freezers and uh, kind of outdated racking for our pallets. So what we did was um, we took out all of the, the walk-in coolers and freezers and we replaced it with a 50 by 20 foot cooler freezer combo um, that was also as tall as the warehouse. So it's 16 uh, feet tall. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're kind of, we're, we're going from thinking in square feet to cubic feet. So we're mm -hmm. really able to use the height of our warehouse um, and then expand its, its footprint. Yeah. Um, on top of the cooler freezer combo, we're also gonna be updating our, our racking system. So it's all gonna be modern uh, racking, uh, kind of bringing it into this, uh, this decade. Yes. Um, so we're gonna be able to hold a lot more, uh, there's gonna be more pallet positions in our warehouse. We'll be able to hold more food that way. And this is important because the food that is, is, comes in, you want to get out as soon as possible. Yes. But you also have to keep it safe. Exactly. In storage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the food is, you know, I mentioned the barrels and so on where mm -hmm. people bring non-perishable items to put yes. in, uh, uh, to donate. Sometimes in a grocery store, somebody buys a little extra and puts it in there. Yeah, but you also are getting food. You mentioned the food bank from the Southern Tier. Mm -hmm. So all of that comes into your warehouse, I Definitely. guess. Um, so that's just one of our, our other donors. We also, we have, uh, oh my goodness, probably over 100 donors that we, we, uh, we receive food from throughout the year. Um, whether it's from out of town, whether it's in town, our, our bounty program, which is our food recovery program, 
um, has a daily presence in the community and we pick up from 20 stores daily. Um, that's all perishable items like bread, uh, milk, uh, meat, eggs, that kind of thing. Um, and that gets distributed uh, you know, as soon as possible. So, sure. So, but, but before it gets, gets uh, distributed, it needs to be brought back to our warehouse, inventoried, checked for, for safety. Um, and then distributed, so so it needs to have a safe place to be stored. Sure, um, you mentioned a new forklift too, mm -hmm. uh, because that has to go up higher probably than the other one did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, is it because the other one was old, or because you needed a more advanced uh, system? So the the other one was was starting to get a little tired. Um, it still works though, and the folks at Raymond were were kind enough to donate um, a new uh, double reach forklift. So this forklift, unlike our other one, is able to actually extend its forks to pallet positions. So it's safer unloading trucks. Um, it increases uh, capacity and, and the things that we can do in our warehouse. Yeah. So. so the visibility of Chow in the community is pretty obvious, but mm -hmm. behind the scenes, you have how many people working in the warehouse? Um, there are three full-time positions in the warehouse, and then I would be four. Yeah. Uh, we have our director, so, and, but, we really couldn't do what we do without um, volunteer. You know, uh, last year we had 30, over 33,000 hours of volunteers, um, uh, with that, and that's really how we're able to do what we do. I kind of look at Chow as a tool that the community uses to help the community. Yeah. Um, it really is a community effort. We, we couldn't do what we do without um, volunteers. Now, Katie, you're working um, with a job training program, mm -hmm. and I was fascinated because this isn't just something that's going to train people to work for Chow. This is something that will train people in the Chow warehouse mm -hmm. to then find jobs mm -hmm. in, in the massive warehouses that surround our area. Mm -hmm. Tell me ab about this now that I've described it in general. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the Chow Works program is a recently launched program. Um, we actually had our first orientation with a group of folks on um, in mid-January, so it's been a, running for about um, five weeks now, and um, the program is a dynamic 12-week program. We receive referrals from the um, Broome, Broome County Department of Social Services, so we work fairly closely with them, um, and we work with folks, and our, our goal is to really empower and encourage and support them um, in their employment goals. So the way that we do that is um, we, we have a job um, experience program. So working in the warehouse, um, Jack talked about just working with donors and um, having the experience to go out on vehicles and pick up um, the food and produce, bring it back to the warehouse, get inventory experience. Um, there's chow markets um, and that's going out and serving the community and providing um, fresh um, fresh food to yeah. folks so and that brings in a customer service component of it so mm -hmm. our folks are um, are learning how to work uh, and that's really what the program's about um, the other aspect which is really nice is that they're also receiving forklift training there's an opportunity for surf safe training um, some individuals have already um, gone through an OSHA training and that um, we're actually working with the Associated Builder Contractors of the Triple Cities. Um, they have a reduced price OSHA training, so which is a wonderful opportunity. Um, and these are all to help, um, help enhance an individual's resume. Um, but we can also advocate for folks and let employers know what kind of employee they are. They're here every day, they're working hard, going above and beyond, good yeah, presentation. Yeah. So that's the, um, that's the, the work experience aspect of the program. And then um, I'm providing targeted case management for folks. So we really want to look at a holistic approach to the individual. Um, and then we're doing that through the case management, through the work experience. Um, I'm also providing um, employment workshops to folks. So things like resume writing, how to behave on the job. Um, mock interviewing, how to answer conviction question, for instance, if that's applicable, um, and networking, things that are just, you know, very, very important. Um, and then um, concurrent to that, we're also offering things like nutrition counseling, um, and that we're partnering with the Cornell Cooperative Extension. Uh, we're working, we've worked with um, Visions, we'll be working with SEFQ to provide financial literacy, um, education, 
also just yoga. We're actually working with the um, mm -hmm. yoga body shop. Um, so, so really, we really we want to look at the entire person because employment is so important. I mean, to to our well being and to our financial health and just um, to feeling like a productive member of society. <clears throat> but also, we realize that employment is beyond just showing up to work every day and. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there could be things like, like for instance, with the financial um, literacy, how to um, have a budget, how to, um, how to kind of go about making sure that you're able to budget, to that you're able to um, provide for yourself and your family, and make um, and make that paycheck stretch. So, yeah. so that's really, um, really what we're looking at is the entire person and, and their pursuit of of employment and really the goal when this program is over, when an individual has um, gone through the program, um, is we want them to be able to, um, to be able to verbalize to an employer the skills that they have, that they've learned, um, and then we can also advocate on their behalf and let that employer know that, yes, we have experience with this individual. Um, so really the goal of the program is to take folks that are in the public service, pub, excuse me, public assistant, receiving public mm -hmm. assistance and help them find permanent jobs in the community so that um, they can get off the tax rolls, uh, have a stable, productive future for themselves and their families. And that's really the goal. And that will, uh, the the circle comes around then mm -hmm. in that they will be able to feed their families. Yes. So that um, the bottom line for that is that the food insecurity for that particular family will go away. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And there's ripple effects. I mean, it, once someone has employment, it affects them. It affects their family. I mean, just think a lot of um, the folks in our program have children, many of them. And their children are seeing their parents get these skills. and come to work every day. I mean, I had someone today just tell me that how important the program is and that it's something really positive in their life. And, um, and that affects that individual, that individual's well-being, just their sense of self, how they view themselves. It also trickles down to the children. Children see their parent um, just having that pr sense of pride. Sure. And it, it helps with neighborhoods and communities. So. Um, there's certainly, um, I think, just so many um, positive implications to employment. Yeah, I want to get back to that. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to Jack Seaman um, and talk a little bit about when these folks come in for job training mm -hmm. in the warehouse. <coughs> How do you now uh, keep them from, I'm sorry, getting in the way? Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got a process now going on mm -hmm. so now you have new folks coming in is it like they're, they're kind of treated like volunteers at that point and you train them the same way you train a volunteer to a certain extent so as i was mentioning before um last year we had over thirty thousand hours of a volunteer um and m many of that was was spent in the warehouse um yeah. so we, we for we have always worked with volunteers in the warehouse um so when this job training program started um we've kind of thinned out the number of volunteers that we take and the job training program participants come in and they kind of take that place, but it's a little more involved than that. Um, these job training participants uh, are trained on the forklift. They conduct inventories in the warehouse. Um, they pick orders. They interface with uh, our agency representatives. So it's they're, they're given a lot more responsibility than a volunteer coming into the warehouse to maybe sort cans and, yeah. and things like that. Now, a volunteer would come in and probably have one particular uh, job yes. chore yep. but a, a person in job training is going to learn a lot more uh, levels Definitely. of responsibility yep. there pretty much every level that that goes in goes into child sure. yep so katie uh, how many people are involved in this program so right now we have six and it is a program that we're working with folks on a rolling basis so as we're receiving referrals from social services they come in and i have an assessment and then we have an orientation and we get them um, working um, quickly, as soon as we can, mm -hmm. in the warehouse, and then engaged in the in the rest of the program um, with the case management, the yoga, the financial <laughs> literacy, um, <clears throat> and nutrition counseling. So really, um, we really um, 
want to work with folks as soon as as soon as we're able to. Sure. The folks who come in are being referred by social services. Yes. Yep. And so that means that um, that that's kind of their head start to to get into the program. Mm -hmm. How do you choose? Do you then, uh, if they suggest someone, do you have to still go through a process to choose the appropriate individuals? Yeah, so um, the Department of Social Services, and we're um, specifically working with Michelle Ferrigno. She's a job de developer um, with the Welfare to Work um, at, in the workforce um, building. And um, she's really working with her team to make sure that they're identifying people that are appropriate for the program. So um, those are considerations like, is that individual in stable housing? Um, is that individual, um, you know, do they, are they, do they have any sort of um, <clears throat> anything in flux with children, for instance. Um, there was an individual recently that's going to be coming that um, she has her nephews living with her now. So she wasn't necessarily appropriate for the program a month ago, but now she is because she's in a more stable spot. So, yeah. Yeah. so really the referrals that we receive from social services, um, we wanna work with all the individuals. So we really don't have, um, a screening once uh, once um, an individual comes to um, the child works program because DSS has has kind of already done that. Sure. When did the program start? So the program officially launched mid January. Um, so I, it's fairly new. It's, it's just, fairly yeah. new. Yep. Yeah. So I actually um, was hired on with the council in October and have been developing the program since that time. I mean, of course, there's um, there's a lot of um, just work that goes into creating a program and creating an assessment tool, for instance, and just um, designing coming up with a program design. Um, so it's been in the works for a while. And even before I was hired with the council, um, I know Jack and um, Mike Leahy, who's the director of Chow, Chow had been yeah. working working on this Chow Works program. Um, but, but yeah, we had the opportunity to start working with uh, individuals, um, participants in mid-January, which mm -hmm. has been exciting. So no one has finished the program yet? No, not yet. No, nope, we're on week five right okay. now. Okay. So going into week six next yeah. week. So graduation for them will be coming up. Yeah, so, so that's going to be, um, I think it's the first, the first full week of April. Yeah when that mm -hmm. will happen. And really, um, like I mentioned before, the goal is permanent employment. So we're really working with individuals to, um, to help them reach, full, reach a point where they're, um, they're finding uh, full-time employment in the community. And part of the case management piece um, is really looking at what that individual's goals are. Everyone has different goals. Um, everyone has different, um, different things that they want to work on. Um, for instance, uh, we just had an individual that took the